everybody. We're back. We did it. It's a second episode <laughs> back. It's a second one they, you know, people came back to the website on Sunday. They're like, is it going to happen? And here we are. My name is Brandon Jones. I'm the editor in chief of GameTrailers.com. You think I'm just sitting back watching trailers all week, but this is not the case. I, I build everything up, uh, you know, like a zit. You just wait to pop and then just bam, all at once. I just watch a ton of trailers. I pick trailers that I think are worth talking about. And that's what we do. We sit down and talk about them. So if you're not doing anything for 20 to 40 minutes, let's all go to the trailers. I'm joined, as always, by Mr. Kyle Bossman. Hi, everybody. And Mr. Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. And uh, it's very simple. Uh, if you missed last week uh, or you are unfamiliar with the show, we do the show in two parts. So this is the first part that you are watching. You can see the link below, which I did not mention last week, for the second part uh, after you're done with this episode. If you want to see more Let's All Go to the Trailers, we will watch more trailers and talk about them. Without further ado, let's look at four trailers that I think are worth talking about this week. Shay was an assassin. We talked about an Assassin's Creed Rogue trailer on Let's All Go to the Trailers. Uh, the first episode back at Defy, but the first episode before we took a long, like, month-long absence. I I'm digging this story. I actually kind of got into this story, and I think this game is kind of taking shape as not just a, a good reason for them to reuse tech that they had spent so much time developing in all the other Assassin's games, but actually telling a story that is not only interesting, but Gasp needs to be told in the Assassin's Creed timeline, kind of filling in the gaps. You have a lot of experience with Assassin's yeah, Creed. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny because they just released, like, whatever, the the Americas collection, right? Like, uh, but th this was really part of, like, this is finishing up this, you know, trilogy or whatever you want to call it because it actually is more than three but um <laughs> but yeah I mean, you're kind of seeing that in between uh which is weird because like you did three and then you went back in time and now like this is filling in the gap between three and four but yeah i'm, I'm a little curious about some of the timeline but at the same time i mean assassin's games sometimes like they, they stretch over decades so I, I think we're definitely seeing hints of that here I think one of the key things that they introduced that I needed is why did he turn? Not just that, I mean, right. obviously something happened, he was sent on a mission, things didn't play out the way he thought he was going to, he was betrayed somehow. But getting into specific details, it's like, why am I going to be into this character? Why, why am I going to justify killing all the people that I've been working for, for five, six plus games? I like the, the tagline of the assassins is, you know, everything is permitted. And it's, it's kind of nice that he says in this, he's like, you don't get the right to do that. Love that. That is my take as, yeah. as, a, as a Templar, is it's not up to you to make these decisions. I'm not being a Templar so I can rule people. I'm being a Templar so I can stop you from ruling people. What do you think, Kyle? I think it's a really good story trailer in that, uh, they, like you said, they, they plucked out great lines. And they uh, tell a story throughout what those few lines that they plucked. Uh, yeah. And this is, that is what this is. This is called their story trailer. And it accomplishes that. It, it gets us interested in this, what we thought would be a side game story. And uh, it looks like it has something to say on its own, which I think is a really incredible a feat. I think it was a little bit late. I think uh, maybe some of their trailers have kind of, I don't know, built up to this. I, I would have liked a little more clarity. I, I didn't like some of the earlier trailers as much as I like this. I think this is my favorite Rogue trailer so far. I would give this an 8.7. Uh, huge variety, which I think is another thing they had to show. Uh, great yeah. voice acting. I mean, it's the voice acting from the game, not necessarily from the trailer, but, you know, great selections, uh, music, uh, editing, all very good. Of course, we see pre-order now here at the end, so that's negative 0.5. Brandon, you do have to play this. You gotta play how this, the announcer says, Assassin's Creed Rogue. Assassin's Creed Rogue. Pre-order now to receive the Siege of Fort Disabla mission and the Ultimate Hunter Pack. Pre-order now. Available November 11th, exclusively on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Because it sounds like edited. It sounds like they took him saying Assassin's Creed from something else. It's really... just play it. Assassin's Creed Rogue. It's Creed Rogue. It's Creed Rogue. Especially because it's the story trailer, and they really want you to get wrapped up in yep. the narrative. And yeah, all of I feel like the like... weight just goes off. It's like we just went from this like big dramatic <laughs> moment to... All right, now, uh, you know, uh, next up on Saturday Morning Cartoons, we know <laughs> Assassin's Creed Rogue. It's like it's like two different sentences. It's really strange. Uh, so I would give this probably actually a, a 9. It is an 8.5. And, yeah, I think, I mean, I'm also going to go with an 8.5. Um, and, and, you know, like, Kyle's little pre-order things usually don't bug me that much, but this one did bug me. It was like you just, you just, you just lost the moment right there. 
because I understand having the pre-orders in there. You got to take a hit sometimes if you want to put that in, uh, you know, because you, you have all this material. You want people to know you're doing it. You, every trailer doesn't need it, you know. Yeah. Like yeah. if if you if you have fans, if you have people who are going to be watching your advertising, get those announcements in there somewhere. But maybe the story trailer is the one trailer that you don't put that stuff in. That you try to sell it just based on its story and not because of all these little, you know. Uh, bonuses you can yeah, get. Yeah, look at this wheel you can get for your... Oh, my God. Did you know you were watching a trailer? You do now. Yeah. <laughs> now we get a very pretty trailer for Civilization Beyond Earth. The people in this look a little weird. The environments look great. Yeah. Uh, I think the setup, obviously, this, this huge shot going through this... Uh, uh, the big camp uh, of people hoping, yeah, to, hoping I mean, to get when, into these when arcs. We first, when we first got this to set it up, Blair and I wrote the, kind of like this Metal Gear flashback. Uh, it definitely reminds me of uh, the beginning of uh, MGS4 until you until you actually get to the people in the back of the truck. It just kind of has a similar type of aesthetic, I guess. I definitely found this to be a very interesting setup. And, and, you know, Civ is one of those games where, you know, sort of like StarCraft, you know, you have the big build-up, Story cinematic, lots of production, but then like once you get into the game, like there's gonna be chapters in between, but a lot of it is like you're you're spending time planning and actually getting into the gameplay. No, that's worth bringing up because unlike that Assassin's Creed thing where we saw like edited together cutscenes and some gameplay, none of this is is what you'll see when you're playing Civilization, unless this is the game's opening. Still, even so, it's not it's not created for from assets of the game, which I think is really interesting. They're telling a story within these two minutes. I don't like this trailer. Wow. Oh, really? No, I don't like it at all. Go on, why? Um, I, I think the girl shows absolutely no emotion when she's torn away from her father, who she's never, or her, her who knows, might be an uncle, might be a friend, might be actually somebody that's It's implied a father. Or definitely implied to be father. Sure. I don't learn absolutely anything from this trailer whatsoever. It's like, we went to space. I knew that already. Like, oh my gosh. We all got people in an arc to continue our humanity. I knew that already. And then we found new planets about to colonize them. I've already done that. I did that at PAX. <laughs> but it gives Civilization Beyond Earth. It's like, what? Why did you bother to to spend all of this money on CG to tell me nothing? To literally give me absolutely zero new information about the story, about the setup, to, to make me feel it a little bit more? Okay, absolutely, but yeah. I don't feel it more again because she has like zero emotion. Like the the shot with the religious leaders walking up and kind of blessing the ship, that's cool. Like there's that's just one yeah. that when he puts his hand up to the glass. I'm, I'm definitely into the initiative of us going into space. To me, this is the game's announcement trailer. Like, this is this is the th thing that announces the game. You're we like, wow, Civ is going into space? Cool. But so many weeks, months after this game was announced, and then, like, we get this? It's like, oh, right, right? And then and then what? It's like, and then we go into space. And it's like, I was there months ago, guys. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I really, when this trailer was over, I was like, that's it? That's the weird story that you told? get to the planet, show something weird that happened with the soldiers when, when, when they were there. Just take take this opportunity to introduce something that I did not know about Sid. I knew all of this. So I guess the emotional appeal works on me. It gives me yeah. context. It makes me care about the tiny little characters that are going to be, you know, in this turn-based game. Because otherwise it is, it's like, ah, oh, Sid in space. And this is, hey, Sid in space! You know, uh, I like the story. I forgive her for not showing too much emotion because she's also the narrator. And, uh, you know, we hear her voice. We, we get what she's feeling. She isn't too sad. She isn't crying, and I don't mind that at all. Uh, she has hope for whatever future they're heading off to. But, man, I was almost too crying. This, is, this bums me out always. Every time. Every time I see this image, I was like, just like, okay, go, go on. Go to the future. I'm going to leave you, my child. I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's too much emotion. It works on I, me. I could stop the trailer if you need me to, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to watch this again if you're just... Uh, if you're, if you're Look not at this. Gonna, he doesn't get selected. He, he doesn't get to go. And then he's like, okay, well, here's my daughter. Click, click. She can go. He's like, go do it. Go. All right, bye. Yeah. See, see you later, Dad. Yep. What about you, bud? Are you feeling it? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely am feeling it. And, and you know, I, I think... This is almost obviously the, the opening cinema. I mean, you probably watch this before you even click the press start button. You know, it's, yeah. So this is kind of to to get you set and get you ready for the the hours and hours that you will not blink. The the one thing that I did find a little weird, and this is just being dumb and picky, but like seeing all these rockets go off at the same time, I'm like, yeah, that wouldn't be safe 
That would be a good <laughs> plan. Would that not be safe? To put them all up at the same time. But the engines go. The engines, like, the smoke just starts to billow out of the engine, and everyone in mission control is like, hey, well done. And it's like, no, yeah. what? No, 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 no. <laughs> you, you, you're not well done until that thing is out of the atmosphere. You know, like, that's that's exactly when things go wrong. Like, yeah. I don't know. There's no, I, I get no emotion out of this. It's interesting that we have that divide, Kyle. I know. That I'm right I, and you're wrong as far as this trailer is concerned. Uh, uh, that's the, why uh, you bring three people. I think it's always good. I yeah. give this a 6.8. Wow. I don't get it. I did find a contrast though between between this and Assassins. Is this still does a pre-order thing, but it's so much classier because they don't have a stupid voice on it. It's just like yeah, just silence. Here it is. You want to see it? Still though, what bums me out is that we see the story of hey, let's go explore planets. And it's like hey, if you pre-order these humans who desperately want to save mankind, they can go find another planet that wouldn't exist if you didn't pre-order. If you don't, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Which is awful. Uh, that's why it still gets a negative 0.5. Uh, this would have been a 9.6. It's a 9.1. I'm, I'm still pretty psyched on this. Um, aside from a couple of little things. So, I, yeah, I'll give it a 8.8. I like that I'm the stick in the mud. Finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm always way higher than you, you guys. You have every but... right to be. There we go. Thank you. In order to succeed here, you have to be a well-rounded Robertson. I know people watching the show must think, no, wait, no, this is a joke. Okay, now cut to the trailer that you're actually going to talk about. This is a fascinating trailer. And actually, yeah. Kyle brought up a very good point, which is this is structured very much in the way like a Grand Theft Auto trailer is structured. <laughs> Tons of dialogue, overlapping. Uh, you know, lots of I'm seeing I like these weird like high frame rate ducks and stuff. <laughs> lots of um, quick cuts between the different gameplay modes. Uh, the trailer really doesn't waste your time. It's got a lot of attitude. It's got a quick pace to it. This is not a terrible trailer. No, it isn't. For a game that we're not really supposed to take seriously, but I also get that vibe. That, the, that they're like, oh, no, 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 don't take this seriously. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, comparing it to something like balls. Fallen Skies. Fallen Skies has a game coming out that does not look very good. I think it might have come out now. All of the trailers are very serious. Like, whoa, this is going to be a really awesome tactical game that you're going to want to dig into. It's like, no, it's XCOM Super Light. And so this, they're like, whatever, man, it's Duck Dynasty. What were you expecting? And I think what you're expecting is is what this game I was in it. I'm not expecting cutscenes and VO and all this stuff. I mean, you know, like I'm, I'm expecting like the bottom of the barrel, like, like a hunting barely game. any kind of texture hunting game where yeah. you run around and like you have this stiff gun and like a really giant target on the screen. And it, I mean, it's it's obviously like it's not top of its class or anything, but the, somebody put some effort into whatever budget they were given. Uh, it's kind of insane. I like this trailer. I really do. Uh, even like we have a clear idea that in the game we're probably going to be that kid who's the new family member. What's funny is I had a better impression before I was actually listening to it. These guys are doing their own characters VO, and they're not good at it. They're, they're, it's very flat, you know, I mean, they are just normal people trying to do voiceover and they're not great. That can be a fault of the trailer, but the trailer is better than it should be, basically. This game doesn't look good. No. <laughs> there, there's some eerie stuff going on. If you actually watch this show, you know, the, the way it's animated, like you were saying, the, the frame rate and just kind of like the, the dip, it's a very high clarity of the bad textures. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like the lighting is actually not terrible, but it's just like nothing, nothing in this looks real whatsoever, but it is their voices. So you kind of, yeah, you're kind of stumbling through the uncanny valley as you're watching this. Absolutely. But I was extremely amused. Again, I'll, I'll say this repeatedly every time we do a show, but I watch these trailers like en masse. Like I really just kind of like throw all these trailers back when I just like fire my way through them. And, and this one stood out, made me laugh. I was entertained. I laughed out loud, brought the, the laugh caused Kyle to come into my office and we enjoyed this trailer together. Yeah. Will I completely lose all respect uh, whatsoever if I score this higher than the civilization beyond <laughs> Earth? <laughs> It's about trailers, not the game, you know what I mean? And it's a good trailer. I give this a 7.6. I give this trailer an 8. Wow. I want to I want to play this game. I might buy it this weekend. I'm kind of curious too. Yeah, I'm it's absolutely like, so should we do a just play it on Duck Dynasty? Absolutely. Just to try things out. Again, I, I th one of the things that really frustrates me about trailers is when and one of the things that fascinates me about advertising for video games in general is when you have the game and you have the trailer and they're two totally different things. Right. I think this game and this trailer get along really well yeah i think this this trailer's you know able to be entertaining without trying i love how the ds version has different box <laughs> art <Yeah. laughs> they make them all like cartoons they're like an animal crossing or something all of a sudden i gotta play that version too so i think it uh yeah exactly okay i'll play it on consoles you uh, play it on 3ds, 3DS sure. and then we'll have our just played <laughs> mm -hmm. so what's, it what's the score blood i still i'm still probably gonna be a little bit lower i like like a 7.2 
I think for me, like, yeah, watching it over and over again helps. But the first time, I was like, it's so many quick cuts and it's so jumpy that I'm like, what, what in the world is even, what is going on in this game? <laughs> it was like, yeah, it's like, yeah, is this a hunting game or is it a fishing game? It's like, has it got all this other stuff going on? How does it all connect and everything? So, it, yeah, it was a little... Very poorly, I would imagine. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little disconcerting that way. It is interesting that they have all of this, this cutscenes and wackiness going on. That it's not just about the activity, it's, it's the characters are brought into it just as much. Finally, I want to talk about uh, a trailer that I thought missed the mark a little bit, but brings up a a point that I don't think we've discussed on uh, this podcast before. So this is for Skyforge, a game that um, is not on my radar. It's not a game I think a lot of people are talking about. Normally we get trailers like this. This is a developer diary. It's, de it's developer's diary, actually, they called it. Volume 1. So we're getting through this game, and they're talking about their ambitions and what they want to do. The reason why I think that they really missed the mark with this trailer is the footage that they're showing me and the things that they're saying I do not feel meet at all. I think they've clearly made some weird promotional videos and now they have kind of big pie in the sky concepts that they eventually want to realize and they're using this footage to try to compensate or kind of demonstrate the things that they are talking about. I think it is way too early in the development process of this game for them to make this trailer. It's, they're, they're talking about all sorts of systems that we're not seeing come into play at all and it just seems like it seems like that's what you want it to be and you're like maybe working towards that goal but you're not there yet so don't <laughs> don't talk about don't get in front of a camera and talk about it what do you think is there like a, is there like a time and place to do this stuff is it I don't well I don't know if I, if I necessarily agree with that I mean I don't know that I could judge where they're at with the game but at this point I, I definitely feel like they're over explaining all of this stuff that is not coming across and I'm just like what are you, what are you saying? It's like they at first I was like, okay, I'm kind of kind of getting into this whatever, and then at some point, like it just kept going on and on, and like it lost me. I'm like, you're just talking so much, um, and and yeah, like you said, like I don't I don't understand exactly. The, like they don't give me a good foundation to build from, and they even say things like, oh, we already told you this stuff before in some other video. Meanwhile, in the this past. is this is volume one. Yeah. And I'm like, what what other stuff? What are you talking about? Why are there these robot things flying around? You know, it's like I don't know anything about what's going on except for like you're talking about this whole idea of becoming a god and getting followers and blah 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 and you have a giant statue somewhere. But what is this like what am I doing to do all of that? Like what is the gameplay like? It's kind of like very it feels kinda of scattered. Uh, or, or, or assuming that the viewer already knows things that they don't know. Uh, another really funny production thing is how the two shots of these two guys are different, the two developers. Uh, this shot is okay, but then the second one, his forehead's a little cut off on the top and we're like looking down at him. You should make sure those two shots match up, just a weird production thing. Also weird production thing, that he's obviously speaking another language, which is totally fine, yeah, but true. some guy's dubbing him. Right. Or if like he was the only guy talking and someone dubbed him, then that'd be fine. Then I could get used to this voice. Mm -hmm. but you have, you know, the An guy English on the left speaker. side of the screen who's speaking English, right. and I can hear his voice and connect with the things that he's saying, and then you have this other guy, and the voice I'm hearing is not him, and so his enthusiasm and, and his natural, you know, excitement around the game is completely canned and fake because it's just a guy reading. Maybe that guy works in the development company. Maybe it's some voice actor that they hired. So I think this guy should have spoke in his original language and they should have had subtitles. Sure. Mm -hmm. Then you're hearing the act, the natural excitement coming through. Then you can match the expressions on his face with the tone that you're hearing from his voice. Instead of, again, it's, the whole trailer just feels extremely fake. He's like, you can have these... Uh, these guys follow you and they show this like what looks like a cinema it doesn't look like gameplay at all it looks like some weird cinema that's not only a cinema from the game it's like this seems like a thing all of these shots seem like something that you created for a pitch meeting or something but we're not in pitch meeting time we're in developer diary time i need to look over your shoulder and see you actually building these systems you know last week we talked about um dreamfall and we, and we got to see their, you know, uh, which I thought, you know, kind of had you know, a little low production values. But at the same yeah. time, we're like really getting in there. They're really exposing the game and really showing like, here are the systems that we used to build it. Here's what it looks like when you take all the bells and whistles out and you just see how these walls and these characters interact. Here, you know, here are the tools we use to build the game. It feels very distrustful. I don't trust these guys. I, I think this game is even at the point where like they could cancel it because they're just like, oh, this is all really just in the concept phase. That's a good point. And it kind of like, the point of a developer's diary 
is not just to like pitch us on your on one aspect of your game design that you're excited about. Is like you know, tell us a story, diary. You know, what's going on with you? What are you doing? Uh, well, I, and that's the thing too. I, you know, the whole concept. You know, when people first started doing developer diaries, you know, perhaps probably 15 years ago now. You know, but like at that point, that's exactly what it was. It was, you know, like kind of like a daily or a weekly log of like, this is what we were doing and this is the kind of things we overcame and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And now it, it's been like, the term has been so overused and and has been used to title so many boring videos, frankly, that people don't really want to see them anymore. And so when the good ones come out, you don't even know about them because it's like, oh, developer diary. Yeah. What a developer diary should be is this is what we're doing. And what the vibe I get from this video is this is what we really want to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. This is our like our big hopes and dreams. And again, that, to me, that's not a developer diary. I give this a five. I'll give it a five point five. <laughs> I like some of the ideas. I do like I like the idea of the more people who believe in you, the stronger you are. That's interesting. Yeah, it sounds great. A good thing to pitch. Be awesome to see some gameplay of it. Huh? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's funny. I, I always, <laughs> I always feel like I get preempted on the scores. But yeah, I was also thinking five. So just do it. Yeah, pull five. the trigger on that five. That is the first part of this week's Let's All Go to the Trailers. If you missed it at the beginning of the show, there are two parts. You can see the second part in the description below, right below the video on GameTrailers.com. We're going to watch a trailer live that we've never seen before. It's a Star Trek trailer. We're gonna watch a cool. story trailer for Star Trek Online. And we're also gonna bring up uh, some other trailers that weren't as conversation worthy as the stuff that we just covered, but uh, are certainly worth uh, putting in front of your eyeballs this week. So thank you so much for tuning in. Check out the other shows on GameTrailers.com and we'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.